Right now, this big inverter is kind of dumb. It just takes the battery voltage and spits out alternating current and powers the house. And that's great, but there's a lot more it can do. If we can set up closed loop communication from this battery bank to the inverter, we'll be able to start controlling things based on state of charge, SOC. That unlocks a whole lot more doors. I've been procrastinating on this video because it involves computers, which I'm not very good at. But in this video, we're gonna tackle it, see if we can set up that closed loop communication. Here we go. Hi, I'm David, and I'm on a mission to take my house and garage off grid. Now, why go through the process of setting up closed loop communication at all? I mean, why do we care? Why does the inverter need to know the state of charge? The answer is that it unlocks some of the more advanced features that you can use. You don't have to do this closed loop communication, but it is a nice thing to have if you got the ability. And these batteries, they have the ability to do it, or at least in theory, and we're gonna find out together if that works. Now, the number one thing that I would like to be able to set up with this is my generator. I want the Insight Home to automatically turn on my generator when it's necessary to recharge the battery. Currently, I've been turning on my generator manually, just when I know that the battery is low in state of charge. Uh, but in order to do that more seamlessly, I'd like the Insight Home to tell the generator when to turn on based on state of charge. So I'm not exactly sure where I'm gonna set that as of right now, but let's say I set it up so that whenever this battery bank hits 20% state of charge, it recharges the battery back up to maybe 60% state of charge and then shuts off. I don't wanna recharge it 100% because what if the sun's about to come out? I want that sunshine to be able to go somewhere. So I never really wanna to top this off with my generator, uh, but maybe something like a 20 to 60% uh, range. And in order to do that, I need the state of charge. Now that's just one example and it's the, the main example that I have with my setup here. For the last few months, we've been running the entire property on this one Schneider inverter. It's been working really well. This is model XW Pro 6848. Currently, this inverter is only being able to see the voltage of the battery bank. It does not know the state of charge. Now this battery bank is lithium iron phosphate, which has a very flat voltage profile, meaning that it's almost always at 53 volts. And you don't know if it's at 90% state of charge or 20% state of charge. It's still somewhere in that 52, 53 volt range. Uh, so to correct that, we can actually set up what's called closed loop communication. Inside each of these batteries, which there are six batteries in this battery bank, and each battery has a BMS, or battery management system, that is able to communicate with other devices. So we've got this uh, Ethernet cable here. It's a Cat5e, and we're going to run this from the BMS of the master battery, and we're going to try to tie it in over here to the Insight Home. Now the Insight Home is kind of the computer that can control all the Schneider stuff and allow you to do remote monitoring. Here's what we need to make this happen. Uh, we've got some wire strippers and our 10 foot ethernet cable. This is a Cat5e. We also have our Insight Home that I pulled off the wall. The Insight Home came with this little 12 pin connector. And this is our guide, a quick start guide that came with the uh, Insight Home. Let's get started here. We're just gonna cut off one end and let's strip some of these wires. Now I'm gonna try to get in here. That is an orange and an orange white wire. Those are the ones that we want. Uh, now the reason why those are the ones we want is because they're the uh, left two, the leftmost wires in that plug. So we just need the orange and the orange white wire. Then we'll strip these off a little bit. Okay. There we go. This is a little tiny ferrule. There we go. 
This is the quick start guide that came with the Insight Home. Pin number nine and 11 are the RS485. So those are the two that we wanna use. And I think, according to the video that I saw from Signature Solar, this one is gonna have the uh, white with an orange stripe. And then nine is gonna be the solid orange. So see the metal connector inside there? That's what we're gonna push into until it clicks. And then the one next to it, see? It's gonna be our solid orange. Uh, so this connector is gonna go on here. There we go, just sits like that. And it looks like there's an itty bitty flathead screwdriver to hold that in place. Okay, great, I can't pull that out. So we're attached, good to go, put this up on the wall. Okay, so up on the wall, we're gonna reattach our ethernet cable to the ZAN bus. And then over here, this one goes up to the um, display. So I just went on to that staple. Okay, let's wrap the wire over to the battery. On top of the battery, we'll just fish the ethernet into that port and open it up. The top battery is the first battery in the line. We just plug this in. And in this particular one, all the dip switches are down, whereas down the line, they have different addresses on the dip switches. So that's in place. I'm gonna tape it on here. Okay, now all that stuff is plugged in. Uh, the Insight Home is gonna be off because our inverter is currently off. So we need to turn that inverter back on. Now that the inverter's on, we need to program the Insight Home to recognize the battery. I could do this through the tablet here, uh, but I'm going to do it on my laptop so that I can screen record it. I just logged into the Insight Home software called Insight Local. Uh, if you wanna see more details on how to set this up, check out one of my previous videos. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now we can either click on the little icon there or you can click devices up in the top tab here. But the point is that we're gonna get into the inverter to set things up. We'll hit configuration. Now we need to set up the battery settings, but we don't have the ability to uh, set up, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a drop down list and it says lithium ion, but it doesn't allow for the external BMS. So we'll click the advanced setting. And then over here we can click external BMS and we'll enable the state of charge control. Hit apply. Uh, next, we'll click Setup in the upper right. Modbus settings. We're at 9600, so that's correct. That's good. And we'll click uh, Device Detection. So next we go to de Device Detection. Range 1 and 10. And Detect. and um, it's not moving right now, but hopefully it finds the BMS. So we just have to wait and see if it finds it. It says it found one device, that's perfect. Now we'll go back to devices, and wow, this is the first time this screen right here has popped up. Now the little um, icon, that actually looks like their battery monitor, uh, which is their kind of shunt-based uh, device to monitor battery. So that must be the default image that Schneider is using for any BMS. Now it's called the SEMB BMS. Uh, and that's very great, that's great. Um, and it says state of charge control is 72%. State of health is 99%, that's excellent. All right, so if we click into this thing, what do we see? <laughs> very cool little graphics. All right, we got 53.5 volts and 72%. 
Good. It says maximum charge current is 300 amps. Uh, now the reason they probably say that 300 amps is because I have six batteries connected. Six batteries connected uh, and the recommended charge rate is going to be a half C, which would be 50 amps per battery times the six batteries. That's 300 amps. Uh, maximum discharge current says 500 amps. It says maximum charging voltage is 58. Well, that actually worked out really well. I was nervous about it going in, but it turned out to be fairly straightforward. We now have the BMSs of the battery communicating with the Insight Home, the Schneider system, letting us know what the state of charge is. This is great. I feel comfortable now proceeding so that in the future I can start using that state of charge to control some of the extra things that I want to do like the generator or the diversion load. If you found this helpful and you like the videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. These batteries needed a firmware update, which I did a few months ago. Uh, so if you want to see how to do the firmware update in order to be able to do the closed loop communication, uh, I will leave a link in the description below to my past video.